Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the third take on the stream of the Unsung City. How is everyone? It was a hot mess last week, and it's a hotter mess this week. Welcome, everyone. Let's get into it. Right into this hot mess. And first, the hottest of messes, a very gentle song as our intro. All right, so it looks like uh, shit. Uh, um, looks like the shit that I uploaded uh, may be broken again. It be like that sometimes. So, uh, tale of souls time. Yeah. So, last time in the unsung city, our heroes took a break from their busy lives to go to the medieval fair in town. After a few carnival games and a meet-up with an old friend, we rejoin them as they continue their festive time. And before a scream the night, the crowd breaks, and 50 people are zombies. <laughs> I feel like that's got to happen by the end of this. <laughs> I love Critical Role Season 2, Episode 1. <laughs> get get Matthew Mercer's ass. It's unfortunately Believe the me, perfect start to I any life trying, game. I have been trying to hire him for one of my asides. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> you and oh. what fucking money, dude. I make quite a substantial amount of money now. Hey, you do you. Rights to you. I'm trying to get there. Well, I, I wanted I wanted to make I was like, hey, I, I, I reached out to his agent. I was like, hey, I'd like to hire Mr. Mercer for like a few hours of Wait, recording. Are you fucking serious? Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. And then I mean, bet. when I didn't hear anything back after the second email, I reached out to Talis and Jaffe's <laughs> Now that I can believe. Person, and I was like, hey. That I think we could I do. would like to hire Talison to do a few hours of recording. I think if I, I think I if I message get... Talison Jaffe. <laughs> I so, wanted yeah. to get the two of them to do the vampires from a side number one. Yeah. What? Oh my god. The Jeffrey. fuck? I, the audacity. I. I, mean, I love it. <laughs> how do you contain that much confidence in your body? I have massive balls. That's what it is. That's oh, fair. I think if yeah. I said to Talos and Jaffe, Beyblades, we do, we gonna fucking rip it. If I win, you have to be a vampire <laughs> for an hour for my friend Jeff. If I lose, I will leave you alone for forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, will not I mean, I was, about you ever I was offering to pay them whatever they asked. Bruh. Oh my god. They're professional voice actors. Fuck it. You know what? You know who I think would before. be. You know how I think would be down. I think we could get Erica Ishii because she just seems like she's fucking down for anything. So, <laughs> anyway, enough about my failures to hire voice actors. They're not damn, good enough. Damn for King, us. what's your rates? <laughs> uh, I start off at standard industry rate of thirty-five dollars an hour. That ain't bad. No, it's not. Especially when I'm yeah. rounding up the hours. 
So if it's yeah. like an hour and 15 minutes, I'll pay you for two hours. Because Man, I know I'm going to call you back for retakes. I'll live. Sometimes uh, you make thirty-five dollars an hour for audio. Sometimes you make thirty-five dollars per minute. Yeah. Well, Good. Wish that were me. Speaking of, speaking of that, uh, I, I look at my paycheck to paycheck life. Uh huh. The uh, <laughs> the new. I mean, you guys are welcome to voice act for me. I just, I Jeffrey, I just don't think I'm good at voice act. Uh, speaking of which, uh, of the let's see, how many? Over 60 applications for this next aside. Over a third of them are for one part. Listen, everyone Fantastic. wants to be the creepy, spooky spider. <laughs> He's hot. It's just fun. Right? Is right. this like the Weaver or is this the... I feel like there was the... Uh, in Dimitri's fighting ring, we did meet somebody who went by the spider. And yeah, I don't want to... Yeah, for that person. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, I take back the she's hot. That's a child. Well, creepy spooky kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering why you were doing that, but I, I wasn't gonna say anything. She is. I mean, it's that like, trope, isn't it? Spider. Isn't it called like "Born Fuckable Yesterday" or something? Well, so what, what the? Fuck? <laughs> what are we talking trope? about? So we're just gonna take a like, sidestep on yeah, this. So, so there's we're, a trope we're gonna of, like, table. Edit. Hold on, stop, stop. We're gonna table this discussion for another time. <laughs> Uh, I know what you're talking the about, is Charles. Running. So it's nothing. It's nothing not safe for work. It is literally just a trope about how men write women in media. But go off. When when we last left our heroes, uh, they were just doing uh, the mimics something or other, the mimics mystery, over here uh, on the map. And now we rejoin them after that train wreck of a sentence. That's right, I want a log. I forgot. You want a 500 pound log, yes. 300 pounds, thank you. Let's see here. I got an airbag and some boots that are made for walking. Heads against it. Yeah. Which means you can't use a pillow. <laughs> it's going to be so useful. <laughs> I trust you guys will find a way to use it. And before just chuck it at someone. Go to sleep. Doom. I have a ring. Oh my god. That's the perfect. I have a use for it now. I've got it. Okay, cool. So, good. Uh, children. Uh, do you want to... What? Are you okay, friend? For some reason, my box for my thing is a rectangle, and it won't let me be in the middle of square. There you go. You're good now. I just have to snowball. That was weird. All right. So, would you guys like? Let's put a nameplate down. Would you guys like to do anything else? I still want to check out what's going up with the Griffins. You are more than I, welcome to do so. I also am going to do that. I'm going to go with, but can I also ask for a general refresh of what's or in the surrounding area? Because it has been too deep. Okay. So to the south is the Kraken's Carafe. Uh, it's kind of like a, a bar slash restaurant, but like, you know, gimmicky. Yeah. Uh, there's mm, also a stand cool. that just... In, speaking of gimmicks, there's a stand that sells like the cartoonish meat on a bone. The only way meat's made be eaten. Uh, there's a fireworks stall. Uh, there's a like a farmer's market kind of thing here where people bring cheese and produce from their farms and stuff like that. Uh, there's a place that sells hilariously like outdated old school maps of the world there's a place that will uh, carve your family's heraldry onto uh, onto like a, a, a wooden plaque that's shaped like a shield and if you family doesn't have heraldry they'll like help you make some up uh, there's uh, just the north of that there's like an apothecary shop which sells some hokey ingredients some you could identify as real ingredients there is of course uh the 
uh, Madame Eckert's small critters with the owlbear, which you guys are taking home with you because you guys can't resist <laughs> gathering more pets. Did we buy the owlbear? We did. Oh, oh my god, we did? We did. Yeah, Albert, the owlbear. Bought it. Oh, oh fuck. Us. There's uh, the uh, <laughs> apples coat. There, there's a stall that sells apples coated in various substances and sauces. Also, I do love the idea that that was a Nid character. Oh, fuck. Man, when the treasurer realizing how many fucking pets we have. <laughs> Just uh, we bought that thing. Like, oh, fuck. There's, yeah, that was completely there's a character. There's stall Tinkers and Toys, which sells, like, clockwork uh, toys that are, like, kind of medieval or renaissance, like, wicker, wood, brass, copper, like, maybe some clockwork gears, but nothing, like electric or anything like that and then there's a stall here which sells masks which uh you can get just like a regular paper mache mask uh which looks like kind of real ish uh but just like elastics to the back of your head like like a like a party city mask uh or you can pay to have a minor illusion put on it which will last for like the rest of the day, uh, which will make your head look like whatever creature you get the mask of. I think someone got an eagle. Yeah, Edwin got a hawk. Or a hawk, yeah. And then Dora, I believe, got a Medusa head, but didn't get the enchanted one. Nah. She just wanted a fun little And mask. then you guys haven't explored the back of the place yet. Well, we're heading back there now. You guys oh, and yeah. there's uh, over here. There's a guy who's like roasting a giant spider uh, and basting it with sauce while also telling tall tales. Oh uh, boy! And uh, uh, there's like boy. jesters walking around juggling. People over here are sharpening like or sharpening like prop weapons for jousts and stuff like that and fighting contests uh before we go um i'm 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 happy to go with you guys to the back i am quite curious about what they got back there but before we leave the fair itself we should get uh we should design a bianchi crest uh, and get it engraved for marie i think she'd like that yeah that's yeah, a thought yeah what's that What's the crest even going to look like? I think we've got to have, like, a dagger of some sort. We definitely have to have a little, like, snowflake in there for for, for our patron, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm not okay. too sure otherwise, but I'm uh, sure we can figure Maria's it. game for it. Yeah. But I think it sounds uh, very good. We should, we should do that. Yeah, you know, we can, we can figure out the ideas. First. Thank you, because I've only got ideas for two of the four things, and I'm pretty sure all the crests need at least four, right? Uh, I mean, yeah. usually there's, like, on all the serious heraldry, I think there's at least three sections. You can have it split into four. It is very classic. Uh, but you can have it split into three as well. Well, it. Just keep in mind, whatever you do, either someone's going to do fan art of it, or someone's going to go on to, like, a one of us is going to go on to, like, a make-your-own-heraldry thing and actually craft this. Someone is... That's fair. I was going to say. For that. <laughs> cough, cough. Uh, you can also just get, like, a shield emblazoned with just, like, one area, but normally it's divided into sections with, you know, relevant parts. Oh, so, good. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, other, what are we doing? Right. Well, uh, I think uh, me and Edwin are going to go back to see uh, the Griffin Paddock to see what's going on there. Okay. Yeah. We'll go we'll, ahead and move we'll the tokens. Brainstorm, uh, heraldry stuff, while we're doing Griffin stuff. Okay. I 
I can't tell if I'm standing on a person or not. Nope, you're, you're standing good. on a bench. Those look like barrels. Okay, okay. so uh, they're, they're like stools. So while you guys are back here, uh, st uh, seeing, uh, standing here near a stage with a sign that says seeing double is, well, standing, quote unquote, floating there is a guy who looks either a very convincing gin costume or an actual gin, uh, pre loudly proclaiming, come one, come all. See if you can match the famous dancing statue of Ildajim. And uh, goes on to like cry it out. And you guys get the general idea of the rules. The statue is going to do a series of poses. And you have to match the statue inside a certain period of time. Uh... About five or six seconds to match the pose of the statue. And if you can do a certain number of poses, you win a prize. Oh, to, to yourself okay. is a man who's selling uh, swords. Some of them. This is quite, you know, like flea market level of like, oh, these are obviously made out of like stainless steel and wouldn't hold an edge. These look like actual swords that were, I mean, they're dull because you don't want people like cutting themselves, but you could sharpen them up and use them in battle. Hmm. Uh, over here, uh, is what looks like a pirate, uh, who is, like, really into character, like, yar, and things like that, and he's selling, uh, bottles of rum, and, uh, come, get some grog, kind of thing. He's selling, uh, looks like, uh, homemade alcohol, which, you know, uh, or rather, he's selling an alcohol-like substance. And uh, over here is a uh, what looks to be almost like a mix between a wolf, a, a scorpion, and a bird. Uh, you've never quite seen a creature like this, uh, but he is enthusiastically uh, calling out, uh, Griffin rides, Griffin rides, five silvers for a Griffin ride. Uh, well, uh, uh, down I this guess way, there appear to be more stalls, but you guys uh, can't quite make out what they're all selling. Shame Chris isn't here. I think he's probably out dancing. But... Yeah, well. Yeah, uh, well, I guess that's uh, our call then. Uh, I got the first ride if you want. Just uh, takes out a gold piece. Oh, you're... Oh. That's very sweet, Shamrock. I think that you should get to ride a griffin. I think you should also try to discover at some point uh, the human concept of rhythm. Like to see... Uh, like to see how you would dance, I think. Uh, based on prior experience. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, let's look at the griffins. <laughs> uh, so, approaches the... Uh, Griffin Master, quote. Uh, uh. Oh. Hello, sir. You look like you're eager to ride a Griffin. You ever flown uh, before? Uh, yeah. Uh, not on Griffin back <laughs> at all, but, uh, I've flown. Ah, uh, well. This will be your first experience, then. Uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, some of the few tamer ones. Or, if you're trying to impress your friends, we have a few of the more wild ones that you know, there's a chance it might buck you off, but you look like a strong, strapping lad. Yeah. Well, I tell, I tell you what, I can take a hit. Uh, let's see uh, what your wild is. All right, well, step on over here to the table as he gestures to the side. He takes you over to the table and he explains. Uh, he is, by the way, large size. He takes up a lot of room, especially mm -hmm. his wings. He's like folding them. He has to fold them in just to like move around a little bit. Uh, but he explains to you you know, you have to sign this waiver uh, saying that if you fall from the griffin, it's not their fault and you can't sue them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that should be fine. Uh, you know, Signs on the here's, line. Here's, here's the list of things you're not supposed to do to the griffin. Here's the things that are allowed to do. Uh, you know, 
treat them with respect, yeah. don't cuss at them, don't throw things at them, don't cast spells from on top of them, the usual stuff. Anyway, just yep, sign yep. here, and it's five silver. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, here's a gold piece. Uh, get the next one on me. Oh, well, very generous of you, sir. Now, if you'll step this way. Uh, now, uh, so you have elected to be on the the the, the intermediate course, let's say. Uh, so, or the intermediate griffin. So, mm -hmm. here's how this works, Shamrock. Uh, I don't know if... I don't think 5th edition has a fly skill. Uh, however... No. Uh, I'm gonna need... Let's see. Let, let's look at Shamrock's skills to see what we've got here. Anything but acrobatics. Uh, let's do... Survival. Survival's animal handling. Yep. Uh, so, we're gonna do a... We're going to require a survival check. Hold on. Before you roll, let me tell you what's going on. Okay. I wait. Uh, so, uh, what you're going to do is uh, you can choose the beginner flight. Uh, or you can take easy flight, which is just kind of go up and go in a circle, and then you come back down. You can choose uh, the beginner flight, which has one or two easy checks you know maybe that might bank a few times and then you could take the intermediate flight which has you know a few loop-de-loops and it has three moderately difficult checks and then you have the expert course which is four very hard checks mm. or rather it'd be like so it'd be two easy one intermediate and then one hard uh, if you fail any of them, uh, you don't get the, you know, praise and accolades. They have, like, uh, what looks like for the beginner course, they have, like, a little feather pendant you can, like, hang from a necklace. For the intermediate course, it looks like they have a crown with feathers in it. And then if you do the expert course, you get an actual, like, uh, certified flyer's badge, which you can... Uh, use if you ever meet like another griffin ride you can uh, waive the fees to get on it again oh wow I'll take the intermediate course and try to win uh, win the crown win my boys a crown all right so you climb on uh, so you took the intermediate griffin uh, and then you took the intermediate course so your DC is going to be higher than if you took the docile uh, Griffin. Mm -hmm. However, taking the intermediate Griffin allows you access to the intermediate and master courses. Or an expert courses. So, yep. Fair enough. Uh, first one's very easy. I'll let you keep that 23. That's fine. It was like a DC 10. So, uh, you, you, f <laughs> you hold on and you start flapping up and it's this is a very like energetic Griffin. It's going, <laughs> going all over the place. Very happy to be up and out of that paddock. And then starts going up, and uh, it looks like someone has put some, like, hoops, like, big, big hoops uh, up on poles for you to fly through uh, up in the woods. So you're coming up to the first one, and this hoop is really big. You, like, your griffin could easily fit with its wings fully extended. Easy roll, DC of 12. Go ahead and do me a survival. Easy peasy. You sail on through. Now, the next oh, one's boy. coming up, and it looks like you have to go through two hoops at the same time. Like, within a foot of each other. Uh, so, oh. first one you could have just, like, skimmed through, uh, even at a slight angle, and still been fine. This one you gotta be lined up perfectly. Mm. So, this one's gonna be DC-15. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it's Schnakens. Watch. Watch. Okay. All right. There we well go. Well done. Everyone claps. The, the big applause uh, for this this guy who's seemingly like first time Griffin rider, but actually he's an expert. <laughs> 
Totally, definitely. Right. <laughs> definitely didn't have my parachute at the ready. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't Last scared what? This, this is... Uh, so you did the intermediate course, right? So, yep. Uh, so your last one is going to be a little bit harder. Uh, so it looks like you can see off in the distance, the expert course looks like a hoop you would have to dive through. Uh, but oh, wow. you, you've, you've done the, you've done, you know, in the intermediate course, this is your last check just to come in for a safe landing because you picked the intermediate Griffin. There's a chance it throws you off and you look like a, a knob at the end. <laughs> Just as you're landing. So go ahead and do me one more animal handling just at the end. Animal handling? Animal. It's a survival. All right. <gasps> okay. This mode's a little rough, but you you don't fall and anything like that. Everyone gets a big clap. Hey! As you land. Everyone, everyone nearby comes up and, you know, gives you a pat on the back or a shake of the hand. The, the pirate, like, ho hoists uh, a bottle of grog to you as he takes a swig. And the the wolf scorpion uh, bird creature comes up to you and says, Well done, sir! Well done! An excellent fly! As he comes in and hands you a crown of uh, actual, like, griffin feathers. Uh... Looks like uh, they are sewn into uh, a headband. Uh, while you are wearing this crown, uh, as long as you're not at disadvantage, you receive a plus one equipment bonus to any acrobatics check. Ah. However, uh, it does not require attunement. However, it is going to take up your head slots. You can't wear, you mm -hmm. know, a hat or anything like that while you're wearing it. Sure. Neat. Well, that was a that was a trip. Yeah. Don't I mean I'm going to uh, take a seat here. Ooh. Who's next? Maria congratulates you. Just gonna tuck the hat away next to the uh, fine clothes for silver. Edwin, do you want to show off in front of your friend? Show off. I don't think I'm very good with animals. Oh, come on. It wasn't that bad. Do the easy one if you want. Uh, Alright, well, I did come over here to ride the griffin, so I'll ride the griffin too. That's <laughs> yeah, Peer pressure. Uh, a time old. Old game yeah. at carnivals. Uh, Edwin will, will walk up to the guy and hand him the, the five silver. Uh, actually, you uh, don't need to. Your friend over here actually paid for the next person to ride. Oh, wonderful. Yep, got uh, it covered. Well, then I'll... Uh, do I do the easy one or the medium one? Uh, Double diamond. How much do you want to impress Dora? Black Diamond. I think Edwin just doesn't want to die. <laughs> 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 I don't think impressing Dora is really in his mind at all right now. Uh, yeah, he's gonna do the easy one. He's gonna be he's gonna be a oh. windy boy. Well, at least he gets to have a good time. And he's gonna be so ready to dimension door to the ground. <laughs> okay, taking the beginner griffin and you're doing the easy course. Uh, yeah. Okay, if you do the beginner griffin, you don't need to make a check for takeoff. It's very smooth, easy. This is for, like, kids and the elderly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> the easy, easy, like, like if, when you do a horse trail, this is, like, the slow old mare. We That's what Griffin. he went with. Oh <laughs> man! <laughs> Who could literally do this path in its sleep? It's can we do? Can we do like? I don't know what the 
the options are. I guess, like, a slightly less decrepit Griffin. No, it's not, like, decrepit. This is just, like, I'm talking about, like, the ease of which it's, like, this this Griffin could fly the course by itself. I uh, see. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a nice, easy, smooth fly. You don't have to make any checks to get up in the air or to land. We need All a right. junior. This is the Weenie Hut Jr. Griffin fight. I, well, I feel <laughs> like that's in character for Edwin, is, I guess. Calmest, All right, yeah. Well. This is the calmest Griffin I have. All right, I feel like that's in character for Edwin. So okay. I guess, so yeah, we'll do you're that. You're up there. Once again, you have to do the very easy, like, two hoops. One of the, Both of them are very, very big. Okay, cool. Uh, so once again, like a DC... Uh, t- I think it was like a DC 10 to go through the first hoop, a survival check. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, easy, easy. you like, so Edwin's like, let's see, that was a, that was an eight. So Edwin's kind of like gripping the reins and it's like trying to make tiny adjustments and the griffin just like eyes like on the side of its head. Or, like, slightly to the side of its head. You know how bird eyes are. Turns its head and looks at you. And you almost get the sense of Griffin's, like, rolling its eyes. And then it, like, plays along with you. And then, <laughs> correct. And, and, like, goes through this massive hoop. Uh, your next, Perfect. Your, your next uh, check. I need you to roll. It's a DC 12. Hey! <laughs> oh, my god. So... Edwin, you're like, you're getting confident. You're like, yeah, I can do this. And you start like steering the griffin. It's like, oh, maybe this guy actually knows what he's doing. Once again, this this hoop isn't like small by any means. Your griffin could easily like wingtip spread, go through it. But it's a little smaller than the previous one. And you easily sail through it, you know, looking like you absolutely know what you're doing. And you've ridden a griffin all your life. And Hell yeah. you come sailing down, it lands easily and lets you dismount gracefully, and it gives you, like, an affectionate rub on the shoulder with its beak. Oh, Cool. Shamrock, well, you want to collect was... a griffin, too? <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Don't Might make an expansion on that paddock back Let's home. Build a bigger one. Like... <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> well, that was Edwin. quite fun. Yeah, that was good. He goes, "Oh, well done, well done, sir. You look like a natural." Here you go. He hands you like a feather charm. It's, looks like it's uh, a griffin feather that's got like a leather thong tied around it, and it's got a little bead on the end that's like glued on so it doesn't fall out of the thong. You wrap it around your neck. It doesn't do anything, but it looks cool. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Proof that you've wow. ridden a griffin. Hell yeah. yeah. Oh, I've never flown before, aside from in an airplane. That was great. Actually, I don't think Edward's flown in an airplane. Let's redact that. How did you get from England to here? By boat, probably. By boat, okay. <laughs> I don't think That's commercial planes are really a thing at this point, are they? I don't think so. Uh, no. Not really commercial. Yeah, uh, so probably by boat. If anyone could boat. afford to hijack a military plane to get you across the ocean, it would probably be your father. That's true, but I don't think his dad was really, like, trying to help him out at no, that probably point. Not. <laughs> uh, also, there are, like kind of expensive intercontinental teleportation networks. But when I say expensive, I'm talking like a hundred gold a person. I must say that Edwin took a boat. Yeah. (laughs) Anyways. Yeah. That was fun. I've never flown before. It was very exciting. I think the bird was being nice to me, though. Roll roll for charisma to impress Dora. Bro, we went to college funny. together. There's no such thing as impressing each other at this point. Yeah, yeah. That's bad. Okay. <laughs> Not a Christmas save, a Christmas yeah. check. 
Oh, I was gonna okay. Say, here is this Dora just looking at the griffin and completely ignoring you because she wants to yeah. fly now too. So you look over to Dora and you're like, "Did I impress you?" And she's not even looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, Edwin knows huh, the deal. Look Edwin at knows that. what, what oh. Dora's about. He's not. <laughs> he's not surprised by this. It's five. It was, you said it was five silver, right? Five yes, silver? ma'am. Step on up. I want you to want us touch to you. A friend I, of Edwin's is a friend of ours. I very much appreciate the <clears throat> kindness. I do believe I can handle silver, though. I want to touch its little beak. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> go. I guess I'll try the hard one, too. The hard so one? Everyone else is showing off. Well, okay. like, you know, the normal right. one. Not, not the Weenie Hut Jr. So do you want to do the easy, the intermediate, or the expert? What's the one that you get? You win things. The expert one. The expert one is where you win the 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 the, the badge that says like, you, and ever, any other time you come across like a griffin ride, uh, station or event, you you can ride for free. Ew. Uh, get... If you do the intermediate one, you get the crown, and if you do like the beginner one, you just get like a trinket. I'm gonna try and go for the crown. I'll do the intermediate. The intermediate, okay. So once again, he has you step up and sign the waiver. Uh, so I if, read the fine print. It's, it basically <laughs> says what I said. If you if you fall off and injure yourself or die, they, the, neither he nor the fairgrounds nor the company can be held responsible for it. So very fair. Yeah, that's where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a genuine laugh. Goddamn. Good. Uh, right it also mind. has, I'm like, sorry. a code of contact you agree to follow. You're not going to, like, tug on the griffin's feathers while you're up there. You're not going to insult it or throw things at it or cast nope, spells from its I'm back. No, but I'm going to pet its little bee. That's, if the griffin allows you, that's fine. Ugh. If the handler tells you to stop doing something, you're gonna stop doing it. This is like, don't, don't do stupid things, and you'll be fine. Vibes. All of these rules are pretty common sense that you would have followed anyway. <laughs> don't Let get me drunk on. and fly a crit. Okay, so he takes your five silver. Uh, now to do the intermediate one, you have to take the intermediate griffin. So I am going to need a, a very simple survival check to make sure that you don't fall off as it takes off. Very good. So you don't fall off as it takes off. The griffin flies into the air. It's... Uh, tell me, like, how, does Dora dream of flying? Is she one of those people who would love to have the superpower of flight? Um, I think Dora dreams of flying where it fits into the context of being able to see a lot at one time okay. like she she dreams of like being high up enough to like see wide expanses she well, she's into heights in that sense you're, you're getting your wish here because as you fly up you look out and you're high enough that you can you're, you're several hundred feet up you can see the entire fairgrounds, all of the, everything seems so small from up here. And you see out into the distance, the bay leading to the ocean. You see uh, the next state over off at the far end of the horizon. Everything looks like you could just scoop it up in your hand. It's so small. And then the griffin kind of like waggles a little bit to draw your attention back as you zoom back in on what's going on. And you have to fly uh, through the first big ring. I need a DC 10 survival check. Hey! Just, just enough. The griff, this griffin's a bit rambunctious, so you gotta kind of like, mm, come on, come on. Like, get it back in, because it wants to like 
go wild and spread its wings and fly around. You gotta kind of like get it back onto the, the course. Flies through the ring nice and easy. On your next roll, uh, you're going to the slightly smaller ring. Now you've got to do a DC 12 survival check. With absolute style. You succeeded by five or more, so you can show off a little bit if you want. Oh, yeah. If, as soon as I can tell that this griffin wants to, like, do some fuck shit and go crazy, I'm just going to lean in with it. Like, wherever this griffin wants to take me in between hoops is where we are going. <laughs> so the griffin, like, dives through a few clouds and sharply does a few turns just to, like, feel alive and, you know... You giggle and laugh as you get sprayed with a little bit of moisture from the clouds. As it dips a wing, it makes a little spiral trail through it. Coming up on the last set of hoops, this is the two hoops that are right, ne right near each other. DC on this is 15. No! Ooh. Do you have anything you can add to that? Uh, it's good. I don't think so. Okay, I so think I... You could spend a good boy point to re-roll it. <laughs> We're at the fair. It's fine if I don't win a sleigh little crown and I plummet and we, a couple of We redo our good fair. boy points all the time. And we're at the fair. Yeah, you might as well. <laughs> Should we use yeah, a good boy point? No, that's... Uh, what else can... are we going to use it on? I mean, you rolled a six, so... That's true. Fine. Oh, hey! <laughs> All right. There you go. So you, you pinpoint accuracy, baby. Yeah. So tell me how <laughs> how you succeed this by more than ten. Tell me about how you fly through these hoops. So they're just like one right after another. Yeah, it's like one and then one like a foot later. Uh. So not enough that you could like scrape through if you would like at an angle, but like mm -hmm. you've got to fly correctly through it. That's how much the distance. I like the idea that in between the last hoop and this set that she and the griffin have flown just so high up in the air that at this point probably the griffin master would be concerned that she has simply stolen it. <laughs> uh, and then you see piercing through the clouds Dora and the griffin, the griffin's wings fully shut in a dive, going straight down at a 90 degree angle. And then, like, the wings flash out for just a moment to course correct, and they just go careening through the two wing the rings. Nice. And uh, sick as hell, wanna, and she is do you wanna, scream laughing. Do you want to try for the full dive? On the expert hoop? You don't have to. But since you're already in a dive. Sure. Alright. Now this one's a DC 17. Big money, no whammies. Hey! Poor baby. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> she said, this is my course now. <laughs> <laughs> so, even though you didn't, like, start out, you're just like, yeah, I'm in this. And you dive straight through. You did so well in this last two, I'm not even make you roll for a land. You uh, you land breathless, panting in joy, and the griffin, like, nuzzles up against you. It had a blast with you. It's sad to see you go. Good. Give it a little head bump with my head on its beak. <sighs> that was absolutely incredible. That was so much fun! Maria's clapping politely. Uh, and yeah, the man Edwin's <laughs> very impressed. The man walks over to you and says, end. Well done, well done! I didn't think you were going to make it there on that last one, but you did great! <laughs> Here, miss! As he, like, holds out a pin. Uh, it's got a... It's like a small silver griffin on a pin. She gives him just the tiniest little curtsies. If ever you are at an event, I will 
extol the experience. That was fantastic. <laughs> ah, he gives you a like a very well done cordial bow. Says, ah, to see such a lovely lady as yourself up in the air makes me wish to join you on my wings. He's gonna give him two firm pat pats on the shoulder. Suddenly, me. <laughs> suddenly, she's like, "Oh no!" Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> A compliment. Yikes! Gross. Get, get out. No. Yeah, oh, no. Ew, disgusting. Positive affirmation. Yeah. Can't stand that. Uh, while Dora is up in the air, the pirate is trying to talk. Uh. Edwin and Shamrock into buying some of his grog. Edwin is very not interested in the grog. <laughs> uh, it's fine vintage, fine vintage. My cousin up in the in the Appalachians actually distills most of it, to tell the truth. How uh. much of it do you make? Uh, trade secret, I'm afraid, as he taps the side of his nose. <laughs> I see. Uh, I'll... Let me try... Can I try a little bit? Would that be alright? Ah, a small taste for the... For the uh, Griffin Rider? Absolutely. Is he, like, uh, claps you on the back, like, hard enough that you kind of go... <clears throat> uh, Edwin's, Edwin's, like, as much as we make a joke about Edwin being a twink, he's, like, not a weedy guy. He's got a strength score of, like, what? or something like that? Negative one. Oh, negative one. Never mind. Uh, he is a weedy guy. He is a weedy guy. Never mind. He's very dexterous. He is not strong. Never mind. He's, he claps you onto the back and you, like, almost cough up your lungs. That is strong, like, uh, the muscles in his arms. And he... He, like, pours some into a tiny, like, shot glass almost and hands you a taste. Edwin will, will give it a taste. Does it taste like good alcohol or like it's, bad alcohol? It tastes alcohol? like very, very strong dark rum. But you are the the consigliere for your family, so you know good alcohol when you taste it. This is not the typical moonshine that'll turn you blind. This is quality product. Edwin's going to lean over to the guy and say, if you might be interested in selling this regularly on a larger scale, how interested would you be in that? Edwin's going to be whispering all of this to him. I, you're talking about a safe harbor in the storm. You could call it that. Hmm. Any safe port is a friend of mine, Savvy. Well, we'll need to discuss this sometime. When you, when do you think you'll be available to oh. discuss the details? A fair end in two days. Where can I, where can I, uh, park my ship? If you know what I mean. Before I give this guy an address, can I, like, see if I can tell if this guy is on the up and up or if he's, like, oh, an undercover cop? Like a cop or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, that would be a an insight check. Oh, I'm not good at those. Uh, <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, I mean, Bars, you can tell this guy's honestly a supplier. <laughs> Looking to right. looking to move some product, he's here, kind of like watering it down. Look, the grog, like you know, because you know everything. Uh, the grog is <laughs> traditionally like rum mixed with seawater. It's just like what they can make out on the open sea. It's very right. watered down rum, but watered down with seawater. This is grog, quote unquote, but it's basically rum like his good rum but like diluted with you know uh like tap water enough that it there's under the legal limit 
uh, amount. There's like less alcohol in his grog than there is in sauerkraut. Okay. Mm. Uh, but his, he, he pulled you a bottle that was definitely not grog when he poured some for you. Oh yeah. I'll give him the address for uh, Maria's shop, or Maria's clothing shop. And I'll say, you can I, meet us here. I am uh, familiar with that port. Wonderful. We'll be hoping to do some business with you soon, then. I. I bring a full ho cargo hold, shall I? Please do. Now, can I interest you in a bottle while I'm here? While you're here? Oh, uh, certainly. Yes. Uh, he, Buy a uh, bottle? Okay. Uh, it's going to be one silver piece. Oh, that's easy. All right. Yeah. So he, he gives it to you with a very, like, exaggerated wink and says, like, the finest grog, as he, he winks on the word grog. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And you, sir, are you looking to buy as he turns to Shamrock? Uh, uh let's take a ball home to Cleo. Eh, he'd probably enjoy it. Okay, so the entire conversation with Edwin and him was whispered. So it's up to Edwin whether or not you want to whisper loud enough for Shamrock to have heard. Uh. Because... Like, he's, he's selling to the carnival goers the very watered down, like, it kind of tastes like rum, but that's all you can say about it. Right, right. Oops. Uh. The watered down. But he gave, rum. he gave me, he gave me he the gave good you, stuff. He though. gave you, like, full strength rum. Yes. Hell yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll say that I whispered it just loud enough for, for Shamrock to, to hear it. Okay, so it's up to Shamrock whether or not he wants to, like, interject that no I actually want good stuff or he's gonna buy the the run flavored water. Uh I think Clue may prefer something a bit uh stronger if you're uh <coughs> savvy. Do you say it like that, like someone who's not used to slang? Oh absolutely. <laughs> okay. He kinda like gives Edwin the eye. Edwin's gonna like give him like a gesture like don't oh, don't worry he's good <laughs> like <laughs> he, he's he's a little confused but he's got the spirit <laughs> he goes and looks he, he gives you edwin this look like okay sure the, whatever like well, look at this rube or whatever but he like one silver piece for a bottle yeah, let's make it as i Think of numbers. Yeah, let's, let's get a crate. Why not? And okay. Pass my gold he, piece. He is not going to do that. Yeah, shame. Okay. We're already we're already like, buying he, more he's, later. He's at a fair. If yeah, you fair. walk around with a crate of grog, quote unquote, he's going to be. It's going to look very suspicious. Yeah. All right. He'll he'll sell you like one I or just two. Just then. Yeah. Meh. Like enough that it would fly yeah. under the radar. If he sells you real stuff. Yeah, I'll just take one ball then. Yeah, it's it's still against the law to sell alcohol. This is he the, the stuff he's selling down is basically like like the the equivalent yeah. of like being colored with rum. That that's all it is. It's mm -hmm. it's it's enough that it could pass inspection if you actually did a test on it. Gotcha. What he's Fair what he's enough. because Edwin is offering to buy supplies from him. Uh, maybe or maybe not legally he's willing to sell you guys actual full strength bottles but you gotta make it look like you're buying as much as a normal fair goer would be which is like one or two bottles at the most mm. alright get the one then I a savvy sailor here as he passes you another bottle of like if you uncork it it smells strongly of booze and you quickly cork it again <laughs> Ooh. Like, you could probably peel paint with the fumes from that. God. Yeah. Uh, if you had to guess... <coughs> that sounds right. If you had to guess without doing any alchemy on it, 
you could probably say it's probably at least 80 proof. Jeez. Well, okay then. Edwin's gonna throw his bottle in his bag. Okay. Likewise. But now we have a supplier, so that's tight. Potentially. Yeah. You so said please. that there was a dancing statue, is that right? Yeah, so if you go up to the uh I'm gonna I'm gonna try the dancing statue. Go up to <laughs> the do Okay, cool. So uh the djinn says, Ah, welcome to seeing doubles. Care to test your luck with the dancing statue of Ildajim? Uh yes, I would like to try. Come, come, one gold piece for a try. Hey. All right, and I'll hand him a, a gold. Okay, so here's the way this works. The checks are going to start out easy, and they're going to get progressively harder. And wherever okay. you fail out is determines the level of your prize. All right, sounds good. Okay. What kind of checks will these be? These would be acrobatics checks. Acrobatics? Oh. You're trying <laughs> to, like, contort your body to match the pose. I was dance hoping library. it would be performance. <laughs> dance, librarian, dance. <laughs> All right. We're going to try acro to acrobatics our way through it. All right. So uh, now does anyone want to do anything for you? I know you have a cleric who could maybe give you a guidance, for example. I could. Uh, would you like that? Edwin uh, will politely refuse. All right. He's going to do his best. Okay. <laughs> and make a fool out of himself. <laughs> cool. So go ahead. And uh, the first one's very easy. The statue just stands. There's like a, a stone grinding on stone sound as it moves. And the first statue is just like in a typical hero pose. Legs spread, you know, fists on your waist and like chest out. DC All right. 10. All right. Good enough. Pass that one. Hell yeah. Very easy. Very easy. Next step up, it it raises, uh, it does like a, it strikes a pose. Uh, one, like it's preparing to leap. So one leg, li one knee lifted and one arm up into the air. Like it's about to spring up. DC 12. Very easy. All right. Next. Uh, so far, so good. Next, the statue uh, leans back like it's almost about to totter over. Arms spread out, one leg up in front of it. Very good. Oh, hey. Hey, hey well dude. done. Yeah, I'm doing JoJo's poses right now, dude. Yeah, exactly. Next pose. The, the statue uh, stands up on, on one toe while the other leg curls up behind it and hands spread out to the sides like a ballerina. Oh, damn, Edwin is so good. I think I snuck a dexterity save in there accidentally. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to do, do that. Do you want to do another acrobatics for me? Yeah, yeah, I'll do Okay. It doesn't matter, you're still fine. Alright, so you're up to a DC 20 now. Oh my god. So this is this one's gonna be a bit hard. So this one, uh the statue uh hops up and stands on one hand with its other limb spread out for balance. <laughs> oh, oh, that would boy. be the one. He gets up on one hand and immediately his arm gives out and he falls directly onto his face. Uh take one point of bludgeoning damage. Perfect. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that, that looked like it hurt. Ooh, so good. Oh, you were doing so well, sir. A round of applause as people, like, start clapping, you know, who are, like, standing nearby watching. The, the, the pirate once again, like, raises his grog to you. Says, got your sea legs there, lad. And... Uh, you did really well for that entire roll set. I uh, yeah, I didn't think I was going to make it that far. Didn't quite get all the way there. So insect landing. Edwin. Yep. 
Uh, you have access to uh, up to the uh, rare prizes. So go ahead and roll me a d8. That's an eight. Wow. Wow, okay, so you get a rare prize. Oh, cool. You so, get this sharp dirt. Do I get another log? <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you roll me a D100? It comes in pairs. Eleven. Eleven. So page eleven. Okay. It's a log that helps you fall asleep faster. And do me a D20. Interesting. Uh, he hands you a box. Inside is a wand of binding. Oh. Okay. I will <clears throat> post the link in the chat. Hell yeah. Uh, basically, it's got seven charges, and uh, you can use it for hold monster or hold person. And you can expend DC one second. charge to gain advantage on saving throw to avoid being paralyzed or restrained, or you can expend one charge to gain advantage on any check you make to escape a grapple. However, it does require attunement. Oh my god, that's actually incredible. Holy it's, shit. It's very good, yeah. Well, that statue was more lively than I expected. Hey. Well, yeah. yeah, he did good until that uh, last part. Yes, my nose hurts. Where are we going now? Come on, come on! Who else wants to try? Well, we can always try over there, pointing in the direction of the area we haven't uh, gone to yet. You, sir, as he points to formerly, you look like a man nimble on his feet. Absolutely, I'd love to give it a little try. Come Although on, I wouldn't say I'm really more nimble than that one. One gold Especially piece to enter? That. Yeah, but you're a rogue, aren't you? Yeah, but my uh, acrobatics modifier is the same as Edwin's. If this oh, was... Shit. Yeah, <laughs> if this was something else, then yeah, but I've got a 5 dexterity and I'm not proficient... Or a 20 dexterity and I'm not proficient, so oh, it's, it's oh, just... Oh, because you need to take cleric first? Mm. No. Oh, I, thought, I thought rogue gave uh, acrobatics. For I sure uh, don't know anything. <laughs> gives you a choice of it. Doesn't uh, mean you take it. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Strength builder, baby. So once they're again, pretty fucking sick. Let's get a rogue up on the stage. Uh, so, uh, first off, standard hero pose DC ten. All right, do it. Well done. Twenty two with a flaw. Uh. Hmm. Next is a DC 12. Okay. DC 14. This is exactly what happened to Edwin so far. Hey, Ooh. just... Ooh. 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 Oof. Ah. So, you kind of, like, scramble for a second. You're like, oh, wait. Wrong arm. Okay. Good. All right. Next, the ballerina pose. DC 16. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> damn. Ooh. We're doing good. <laughs> DC Are we? Hey! Oh. Now, the handstand, DC 20. The one handstand. Oh. No. Oh. Do you want to use one of your good boy points to try to reroll? Good it? boy point. Good boy point. Wait, actually, instead of that, I'm going to shuffle on the ground. Your other arm! And use a flash of genius. So it's plus five. Oh, hey, there you go. <laughs> so you start standing on one arm and you're like, Whoa, and Gemma says, your other arm, and you're like, oh. <laughs> Just enough to pass. All right. 
now the statue is getting really into it. It starts doing, uh, it decides that one hand is for sissies. So instead, it's going to be balancing on two fingers. Oh, Jesus. It puts both arms down and pushes up on two index fingers and then starts, spreads its legs wide out to the sides. I was just flexing on us. DC 22. Ooh. Jesus. Believe. Be um, believe. Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's all right. Can you do another flash? Mm, it's not going to be enough. And also, what if we have combat later? Eh. Eh. Me. Ma M Maria calls out and says, You've got this! <gasps> Perfect little sweetie. If you can flash, that'll bring it up. It's an 18. If you can flash, that'll bring it up to 23. No, I get a million of these, these now. Sure. One more. All right. That's silly. The statue... The statue kind of gives you a... Like, turns to you. It's It's like a blank vaguely masculine facade like there's there's a nose and a suggestion of where a mouth would be that's about it but you can get the sense the statue's like eyeing you up and then flips up until it's uh stands on its feet and then bends back to a full bridge oh god now the reason this is such a high check is because you have to do all of that in five seconds Jesus. Okay. Magical thinking. This is uh, a DC twenty-four. Jeez. Crit. Okay. I'm gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say I have to roll a nineteen or a twenty in order to get this save. I believe in you. I Can Edwin you. inspire? You. You may. Yes. What does Edwin say to inspire formally in this instant? Um. Oh fuck! I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Edwin will will yell out. You show that statue who's boss. I don't is, know, I feel, I is Dora not... with them now? Yeah, D Dora, you've been on the ground for a little bit. Ah, oh, shit. T take a fucking guidance, my fellow cleric. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I think you I show think... that statue who has movable joints. <laughs> I think guidance I might know. be a touch spell. Oh, it, it is. It is a touch, but it's mm. fun, so why not? Oh, my God. <laughs> It's a D4. Okay. All right. And how much is that wins Bardic Inspiration? Looks <laughs> like a D10 now? Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. So that's... <laughs> All right. So seven. And then D4 is two. So plus nine. So now the you need to roll 11, a 10. Then... Oh, wait. No. No, no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. right. You need okay. to roll a 10 or higher. Hey! Yeah! <laughs> God. Now we just have to do this for every level afterwards. <laughs> you, you are flexing on this statue, and it's like giving you the fish eye, and it's like, okay, smart guy. Let's see. Alright, so it goes, okay, let's see you do this. And uh, it balances... Uh, it puts two palms on the ground, balances, like, 90 degree angle, puts all of its weight on those, and then lifts one of its legs up in front and places that on the floor next to the hands. Okay, fuck. Like, we're in contortionist <laughs> levels now. Jeez. We fit trainer looking ass. It does a 360 no scope and lands perfectly. We are on a DC 26 now. Jesus. I can't physically roll that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll you. try. We believe. Uh, you that still have the guidance on you. I think it's only once. No, guidance is up for up to a minute, baby. Yeah, I, yeah but I think it's concentration. Oh, oh you're concert. correct. Doesn't matter. Maybe anyway, you can do it again. It's fine. Yeah. It's a so 20. So for the G. You, you fail by five or more, but it's fine. Uh, I, at this point, I don't think that anyone other than, like, a superhuman could actually keep up with the statue. Uh, but you, uh. you put in a valiant effort, and 
you don't quite get your like you get most of the way, but your foot doesn't quite reach all the way to the floor, and you feel something twinge in your back. You're like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna feel that in the morning, and yeah. you slowly unfold from the pretzel that your body has become. You're definitely gonna feel all this vigorous activity in the morning. Great. Uh, uh, but the djinn, like, claps, like, heartily for you, and the statue, like, stands up, and it turns, and, like, very mechanically claps for you as well, with, like, the sounds of stone crashing against stone as it applauds for you as well. Like, you've done a good job. Uh, you have earned everything up to the, uh, very rare category. So, oh. Roll me a D ten. A four. Okay. Uh so you get a rare item. Alright. Unless you'd like to re-roll it. I you know, shoot. Let's re-roll it. Okay. Try to get a little higher. Okay. That's a little higher. Just, just because yeah. giggles. That's enough to throw you in. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. Uh, as soon as magic item list will go, there we go. We have. Oh boy. Uh, roll me a d12. Hello? Sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I, I heard words and I, I just realized I didn't hear any of them. Bring it over. Roll me a d12. Yeah, bring it over. Nine. All right, page nine. Come on, Indy Beyond, help me out here. God, I got a tattoo last week and it's in the itchy phase and it's so itchy right now. Oh. All I want to do is itch it and I can't. You should. You got that fucking trash bag on it, bitch. No, you're not supposed to wear it for more than a day. Yeah. Um, but it's it's healing pretty well. It's just a little bit red in the center. Okay. Yeah. So let's get... Uh, roll me another D12. Again, no problem. Seven. Cool. Okay. Now I need a D20 from you. All right. 16. Alright, as soon as it decides it wants to have dates. You get another log. Can you imagine? Can, can you believe a much? log, but this one's real big. This one's a ton. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, hello? 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 Ooh, <laughs> Ooh and oh. I cannot stress enough. Woo? Oh, I see. Okay. Uh... <laughs> You draw the legendary sword Excalibur. You're now the true king of England. No, he hands you a box with a ring inside. He's proposing. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't know. I... Oh my. This ring is made of solid electron and emits very small vibrations that are nearly imperceptible. Fuck a cock ring. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so you sorry. You open your mouth I... and you say horrible, evil things. I need you to know that that was not even a thought in my head. My mouth simply said it. I'm so sorry. This is the oh my! Pantry. 
Uh, while wearing this ring, you have an infallible sense of taste. You can distinguish and identify individual components of any non-magical material or mixture you taste. Uh, add double your proficiency bonus to... And a considered proficient... Uh, and just add a double your proficiency bonus to checks to produce food or drink. Uh, you gain resistance to poison if you are <laughs> an advantage on saving throws. If you are already resistant, you instead gain immunity to poison. <gasps> I'm immune to poison. As an action, you can move the ring to your fingers <laughs> and place it on any surface. When you do so, you speak the command word and the ring becomes a square metal hatch large enough for a medium creature to pass through unhindered, which remains... Uh, until you command it to revert back into a ring. When you create the hatch, any number of creatures you choose are permitted to open the hatch. The creature you have not permitted to open the hatch is incapable of touching it. Unless the creature is capable of entering the ethereal plane, blah, blah, blah. Uh, while active, the hatch will respond to the following verbal commands from the attuned creature. Using each command word takes an action. You can turn it into a hatch, revert it, make the hatch open to any creature, seal, enhance... A food or drink item you touch instantly improves in quality in a way which you determine one might age or want by a couple of centuries and add berries and spices to it or increase the marbling of a cut of beef, for example. Excurse teleports any creature object within the space uh, of the attunee's choice to the desired destination, duplicating the effects of a teleport. Upon arrival, the hatch will open once again, becoming a ring and appear in the attunee's hand cannot be activated for the next 1d8 minus 1 minimum 0 dawns. Transport uh, teleports an object within the space of the Tunis choice to a location within a mile. The object must be fit within a 5 foot cube. You can use this time Jesus. Uh, uh, a number of times equal to the proficiency bonus and regains all expended uses daily at dawn. Uh, the interior of the hatch is 20 foot cube. This is fucking I'm crazy. Kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, you fucking. You got really you... good because the next one up was like a, the fucking oil that adds elemental damage to ammunition. Yeah. This this is crazy because like we're trying to make alcohol. This just makes alcohol. <laughs> you can just age shit and make alcohol with this. Yeah. One yeah. one step up. Unfortunately. So. Well, take swill, make drinkable beer. Okay. Take drinkable beer, make really good beer. Yeah. Uh, it, I'm gonna... Like, there's a limit on this. You can't just, like, instant, you know, in 30 yeah. seconds. So it, it would take you a bit of time to process. But you could, indeed, if you wanted to devote a day to doing it, you could, indeed, upgrade a few barrels to high-quality beer. Yes. Dang. All right. It's it's a really good item, and you 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 got really good checks. So this is what you get. Come on, come on! Anyone else? Anyone else try? I think I'm good. good. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna try that. I think that we've full. expended our luck. Yeah. And also, as you come down to the stage, as a uh, silver is sort of wandered through the crowd singing that sort of touches the nub of his horn to you and now your back doesn't hurt anymore oh thank you that was that was gonna bother me in the morning thank you so much a small metal salute from tin tin on his back and off they go again <laughs> a valiant horse in there <laughs> uh maria will step up and try Oh goodness. Does Maria have Dex? Does she have acrobatics? Uh -huh. The Maria you know, doesn't she? Okay. But she's willing to give it a try. Yeah, yeah for sure. <sighs> so Everything the statue... I'm just rolling some GM rolls. Everything the statue seems to be throwing at her, Maria is just with aplomb going through it. Uh, eventually, the statue just gives up. 
Damn. What? <laughs> yeah, he gives up around a DC 30 and just, like, gives up. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, I guess it is Maria. I gotta show off, but Jesus. Yeah, um... Shamrock. You have a passive uh -huh. side of really high. Yep. Uh, you're pretty sure that either Maria's like been holding back on you, or she's cheating somehow. <laughs> Money's on the ladder. Yeah. Uh, who wants to roll uh, a D100? Oh no. I guess I will. Four. Four. <laughs> well done. That can't be good. Suddenly Maria becomes a power plant. Grows six inches shorter. No, we're not we're not in the wild magic surge thing yet. Yeah. We're just picking the page. Ooh, twenty. Okay. Uh, so we are in this page. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, D&D Beyond is being very slow. Hmm. And we're doing that one. Filter. So anyway, uh, while I'm waiting to figure out what's going on with that, you guys can move on to another. Yeah, I uh, guess we see the part we haven't seen yet. Yeah. 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 Okay. Go over to the left. Cool. So uh, this one is a stand that sells uh, what looks like um, you know how you can like uh, do that like cup game for goldfish it's just yes. like a similar thing but for venomous snakes another pet guys <laughs> oh my uh, god so uh, if you like it costs two, two silver to play, and uh, then, like, you notice, like, on the, like, two silver, and then, like, in smaller text under it, it says, ten gold for anti-venom. <gasps> I love them. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, so... What you do is you reach in and try to grab a snake by the back of the head and lift it out. Uh, if you met, and then like on the underside of the snake's head is written a uh, is written a number. Oh jeez. That determines your prize. Uh, if you fuck it up, uh, the snake will bite you in the hand. Oh god. Do you also get to keep the snake? You you may if you desire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Cleo. Well, that listen. Was the, <laughs> that was the real enticing part, not the rest of it. More pets. God. And here's the thing. It's been, so far, just a very wonderful time. Who wants to, and not to sound like a crazy person here, who wants to stick their hand in a thing of snakes with me? Because I think that sounds like a, a, a fun time. Uh, Maria, like, looks at the snakes and backs off. 
Yeah, fuck it. What are they gonna do to me? Sure. Shamrock just leans over to Edwin's ear. And you knew her? <laughs> Can I fucking hear? <laughs> uh, what's your passive perception? Fourteen. Shamrock, would you like to make a deception check? Sure. <laughs> as well as that will go. DC 14. <laughs> you definitely hear what you said. I don't know, just look at him and be like, You should be a little quieter if you're gonna say things like that. And then he'll... <laughs> Yeah, that's all he'll do for now. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll wait till later to discuss this. Oh. Just gonna walk up to the person at the snake stand and just be like, I would like to play. I would like your finest snake. <laughs> I would like to snake, stick my hand in your finest snakes. I would like to play your game. Very However. Well. I do want to know, what kind of snakes are these? Uh, oh God, you're gonna make me pick up a snake. I'm going to make you. I I'm going to make you pick a pick multiple types of snakes to be in this little snake pit. Oh my God, I hate <laughs> you so much. All right, let's see. My thing is, are there any king cobras, and can I have one for the thematic themes? <laughs> I tell toy? you what, roll me a d6. A D6. I absolutely can do that. A three. I mean, Roll me three I mean, D20. Three D20. Okay. I mean, if any we of need... them are a ten, there is a King Cobra in there. Well, oh. there isn't, and that's okay. Uh, Reroll the re -roll one of the twos, because you can't have duplicates. So there is a mainland tiger snake, an inland type taipan, and. Uh, a abandoned crate. Crates are the ones that are in the ocean, right? No. Nope. Okay. It's a crate dragon. They do have an extremely potent neurotoxin, however. Sexy. Jesus. The most venomous snake in Asia. Good for them. Get it, kings. I want to stick. Snake of course. How much? You guys could use a good boy point if you want to reroll one of those d20s. <laughs> Your call. No. Uh, if you want. I'm good. I mean, think about it this way: you're picking your pet for the pet episode. That's true, and I. Here's the thing: is I said that I'm talking to the other group. I said that I couldn't afford the owl bear, which I couldn't. That is very true. However, if I pick up one of these things. I do have enough for like, I don't know, like six things of anti-venom, and that seems like maybe it would be enough. I know I could manage to reverse engineer it. I... Hmm? Can you do it before you uh... die to the snake bite? <laughs> That's a good question. I We're mean, gonna uh... find out, I think. <laughs> Shamrock just kind of like looks back between Edwin and Dora and just sort of shrugs like, I uh. don't let this, don't let this reflect badly on my dear Edwin. We haven't seen each other in quite a long time. It has been literally years. Tell you what, you can at roll least half a decade. I can roll. If you, I want to stick my hand in the goddamn thing. No, I want to roll I mean, it for the for the D twenty. If you're going to do the re-roll. No! Okay. Oh, okay. No, you're not going to re-roll, or no, you don't No, I'm not going to re-roll. Okay, so... That's a uh, waste of a good boy point. Okay, that's fine. A snake's a snake's a snake. They're all good. Cool, so Dora, uh, go ahead, and I want a dexterity check. Oof. Uh, okay. I'm going to spend a bad boy point to make you roll with disadvantage. Of course you will, because you want me to die. I got I'm, handing, I'm preemptively handing this person the ten gold as well. Okay. Just, I mean, I gotta I'm get you back this good boy points somehow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Dexterity check. Yes, at disadvantage. That's a three. Ooh. 
Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so you like stick your hand and you're like you're going for one of them. You're, like the one grabs your fancy and you don't even notice another one just like come up from under your arm and bite you on the hand. I don't even notice it. <laughs> Until it's Not too with late. a natural one. Okay, that's very fair. I'm All gonna right. keep my I'm gonna keep my hand in and try and grab them, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so, I'm gonna need a constitution save, please. DC of yes. Hmm. So, about that constitution save. DC 10. DC 10. <laughs> uh, not for these snakes, no. <laughs> Who wants to roll me a D3? Oh. All your hearts, guy. <laughs> I'll just have to make a new character. It's fine. I got you. I got okay, you that cool. one. So we're doing the inland high pack. Uh, no, the mainland tiger snake, I think it was. Yep. That was the first one that you said. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So oh, it's got a cute face. Uh... Affects the nervous system, blood clotting proteins, and muscles. Ooh, yikes. Okay. Uh, five poison damage. Okay. And, because you failed. Uh, four... Dexterity damage. Ow. More dexterity damage? Yeah, it's a neurotoxin. Your muscles don't react properly. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you, you quickly, like, slurp up one of the anti-venoms and the dexterity damage goes away. Okay. The poison damage, however, does not. Did I manage to pick up a snake, though? You, you did manage... No, you not with a natural one. You did not manage to pick up a snake. I'm fucking sticking my hand back in. <laughs> All right, another two silver pieces. <laughs> oh. Roll me a dexterity check again. And another ten gold. Giving to them preemptively. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh. You know, I've seen so many people just, you know, do the snake charmer thing, do the sticking their hands and just picking up... <sighs> Full cobras. Hey. This is a lot harder than it looks. Hey, cleric. You can give yourself guidance. You are so good. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll fix that. Oh, <laughs> Would you like to spend a good boy for me? No, because it's funny. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm afraid with a natural one. It doesn't matter how much guidance you give yourself. <laughs> oh. Oh, honey. Okay. <laughs> My fucking face hurts from laughing. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Want to try one more time? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, not an instantly lethal dose. That's good. So you're going to take... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 54 points of damage. <laughs> you're going to take 10 points of poison damage. And I'm not even going to roll for how much of the uh, the dexterity damage this neurotoxin does to you. Uh, because you quickly, like... Like, uh, get it. You, you drink it quickly. Uh, you did take 10 points of poison damage, though. Would you like to try again? He's just like, easy money. Pretty you might as college. well get bitten by the third one. You know, you've gotten bitten by the first two. Easy money? No, he doesn't say that out loud, but that's like the look on his face. <sighs> this guy is a Rakshasa, um, by the way. Oh, not to be racist, but... <laughs> just Fuck chaos. you in particular, tiger boy. Um... Uh... You know what? Fuck it. 
All right. And oh. I'll I'll just go into my pouch, pull out the ten gold. Listen, this okay. was on the house. Okay. Cool. <laughs> hey, we didn't immediately get bitten by a snake. Oh god. Okay. Jeez. So, now would you like to roll me a d6? Okay. Four. So you get the banded crate. Well, let him that out. The third one. Cool. You have successfully interacted with all three types of snakes. Yep. I sure have. What do I win? You win an incredibly dangerous snake. And you, you said we the... won something up with yeah, snake. Yeah, and you look on the bottom, and on the bottom it has the number 46. So 46, earns... what does that mean? That earns you... An Ooh! Pop. That's kind of fun and funky for her. I'm going to look at this... Stinky, stinky tiger boy with just a stink, stink face. Uh, very gently and sweetly and lovingly toss that snake back where it came from. <laughs> and just like, Did you want the fancy this, snake? The most. This, <laughs> those snakes are not very nice. <laughs> uh, to uh, be fair, they're not exactly pets. Well, I mean. You could, you know, animal handling to train it. Also, uh, I'm just going to let you know the DC on a crate snake's venom is very high. Yeah, so probably. Do, I mean, you do have at least one person who could apply poison to weapons. True. I... I mean, it's up to you. If you want to make a statement, you can make a statement. I will never stop you from doing so. The the minute that, like, everybody has moved on and nobody's looking at me, go fucking hiss at the snakes. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> the snakes do not seem to respond to your childish hiss. <laughs> Very disinterested right. snakes. I... They're, they're unintelligent creatures. They're snakes. That is very true. It's um, not their fault that someone was fool enough to put their hand in the, the pit three times. Three times, yeah. Almost like someone was sticking a hand inside your house right next to you. That's fair, I guess. <sighs> I mean, he just oh. made... Uh, 30 gold. He just made like 30 gold and 6 silver off of you being, like proving a point. So, I mean, of me being stubborn and I'm fine with that. But nah, I mean, still. He, came, he came out on top even if you do give him the stink eye. Well, I get a cool top and I can say that I've been bitten by uh, very poisonous snakes two times and you know what? I don't even have to spend any money doing anything to fix that. Hey guys! How is this town on open... I haven't been around people in a minute. How's this town on, like... Weapons? We're at a... We're at a Ren Fair! Never mind! I'm gonna take out my fucking Kopesh. I'm gonna rip a bandage off of it and slap it on my hand. Okay. It's also the third largest city in, in, in America. Go ahead and roll the healing to Town is a bit of a word. It's so much. Uh... Ten four twenty. Yeah, I got forty hit points back. That, that was so many ones. Point. Jesus Christ. That bandage yeah. treated that poison super well. Sure mm -hmm. did. Is that how that bandage is that how that weapon works? I didn't think it was that many D4s. Potion of Supreme Healing, bitch. Oh, Ten yeah. D four plus twenty hit points. Nice. Alright. Uh -huh. Was I mean, uh, formerly also gonna go for the snakes. You know, I feel like by watching this, I feel like I've already lived the experience. <laughs> Are you sure? I, uh, I will say. It, here's the thing: the first one didn't even notice it at all. It's not bad. It it hurts. It definitely. I believe that was hurts. nerve damage. 
Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Probably actually true. <sighs> I don't think I would be actually affected by it, but uh, it's fine. I I I don't I I I don't need this. Did you speak snake formerly? No. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, he can. Um, shoot. Hold on. He can speak to he spiders, a, right? He he can speak to vermin. <laughs> Snakes so, technically count as. I I, if you'll allow it, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the snakes are like. Like they're getting riled up by Dora, so they're like, they're like egging each other on. Like, yeah, we're gonna bite the next hand. Yeah, it's gonna get so good. I Don't dare the next person to stick a hand in here. <laughs> oh. I, I I I lean down and I go. If I stick my hand in, please don't actually bite me. I mean, I, you can, I guess, but it's really not gonna do anything, and it's gonna embarrass you, and then I'm gonna have like two holes in my hand. All and... right, formally roll a d6 for me. Are they gonna bite me? All right, and roll me 5d20. Oh. <laughs> uh, re-roll that nine. Which one? one Either one. Just... You can't have duplicates. Okay. <laughs> Send the 14. Okay. Ooh. So you have a Russell Viper, a Blue Crate, a Boom Slang, and 13 and 14 are the Death Adder and a Beaked Sea Snake. Jesus. Are you sure this guy has a license for all these snakes? Are you going to ask him? Oh yeah, it does say snakes. Sorry, <laughs> I was I was looking at the thing and it's conspirator's tongue. Uh, you can cast speak with animals at will without expending a spell slot, but only to communicate with snakes, spiders, insects, and other vermin. Yep. Tell you what, that's a ten. Uh, there's also a king cobra in there. <laughs> Just there to taunt. One king cobra in the entire <laughs> box. Or really looks back again and goes, again, I really don't need this. We don't, do, are we, I, I'm good personally. I'm not, I'm not egging to stick my hand into a box of snakes. Like, I, 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 I kind of get these guys and I still don't think their venom would affect me. But it's not like my thing. And I, it's, it's sticking your hand into uh, a box of snakes. I believe the ring actually is an attunement item. Doesn't it not matter because you already aren't <laughs> well, able to I'm, be poisoned? Yeah. I am uh, resistant, not yeah. immune. To immune. So you would have to attune to it spending an hour before you'd be immune to poison, but you are still resistant. Yeah, no, I'm good. Okay. It, it's cool, and I like these snakes, but I, I don't right, need you, this. You don't want to get a King Cobra for Dora? It would Dora. kill me. Literally or figuratively? Yes. Mm. No. Fun. <laughs> Alright, can I close oh. this list of the 20 most venomous snakes in the world? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> oh. I appreciate you entertaining my idea. I did not mean to peer pressure you into oh. considering sticking your hand into a bucket of snakes. No, it's really not a problem. Uh, I uh, just didn't want to. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, so inside Maria's box is a a fruit with that looks really weird. Oh. Oh, from the the statue. From the statue. It's not yeah. very nice to call Maria fruit that looks very weird. <laughs> Damn, I think How she's getting her back. Inside is, a pic inside is a picture of formerly. It's a fruit that looks like. God. Rude. <laughs> He's beautiful. Oh. I love him. What is this weird fruit? Uh, 
Make an arcana check. Can I uh, assist? Sure. I guess you didn't really need it, but in I know I'm with you. Uh, seven <laughs> has no idea what this thing is. This is a legendary. Really? Oh, Ooh, shit. All right. Holy shit. Uh, it's got I strange guess. patterns on it. And it's a very, Nick. like, unfruit-like color. Like a, like a yellowish green. But, like... Like, unripe fruit are yellow or green. But this is, like, yellowish green ripe fruit color. If we cut it open, does it have teeth inside? I don't know. Do you want to try cutting it open? <laughs> that was a, a cheeky reference. God. So, here uh, is... Like, classic whack-a-mole, but it's whack-a-worm. It's, hmm. it's almost the same exact thing as you'd find in an arcade. They're just worms instead of moles. Uh, over here is a fancy hat shop. They are non-magical. They just look really cool. Lots of hats. All kinds of hats. Uh, if you roll really well in your search, you may find a, a, a minor magical hat. And then over here is in, like... Uh, you've seen in cartoons where you're like, oh, that's the house the goth girl lives in. And it's like color, 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 like grayscale, sharp line. It's like that, like in a radius around this fortune teller's hut, everything is just darker. Like an overcast day in, in like late afternoon, darker. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> Well, that's uh, ominous. Come, come, dearies. Come, get your fortune told. I mean, clearly we have to go, right? Uh, yeah, obviously. Uh, I guess. Now. I don't uh, know yeah. who going to get his fortune guys, told. Do you guys want to do the wacko, the wacko worm or the fancy hats first? I'll whack some worms first. Okay, I'll cool. look for a hat first. Okay, I will cool. also whack some worms. <laughs> okay, so whack a worm. Uh, anyone who is proficient waka waka. with, uh, anyone who's proficient with martial weapons, uh, can roll at advantage. Everyone else just rolls base. It's, it's just gonna be a d20 plus strength. How do we know if we're proficient in martial weapons if we're bad at making our sheets? Uh, well, step one is to get good at making your sheets. I won't. <laughs> do you want me to look for you, bud? I just... Rogue was your first class, correct? I think so. Uh... You are proficient with simple weapons, hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords. So, unfortunately, not. That's A-OK. -okay. It is very unfortunate. If only you were just a little bit better. So true about him. Uh, Shamrock should be, though. Think? Nope. No? Hmm. Nope. Uh, now I took uh, are artillery. Are any of you proficient or... with martial weapons? Nope. Okay, I guess everyone just rolls at uh, d20 plus strength. Who's going first? Uh, thanks for volunteering, Edwin. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> everyone will step up and... <laughs> Damn, you're lost. some worms. Okay, so here's how this is going to work. Oh, what's your strength score? Minus one. <clears throat> yeah, that's my bonus is a minus one. Okay, so the DC to hit these worms is 12. So you're just going to uh, roll five D20s, and you have to hit a 13 or higher to get a hit. Oh. Ooh. Oh, oh okay. uh, you got four out of five worms. Uh, hell yeah! So I can't believe it. You have earned a minor magic item. Oh, cool. <laughs> Just oh. ice that never melts. Cool. Like, uh, you have earned a a one foot by one foot by one foot cube of ever ice. Uh, he hands it to you in like a a, a or she she hands it to you in like a. 
a uh, what's the word insulated uh, package so that it doesn't like it doesn't melt, but it's still ice, so it's cold. So it's an insulated. Put it in some water, get some cool ass fog. I mean, it will eventually freeze the water. Yeah. All right, Edwin will throw that in his bag and. Okay. Who's now next? I got some. Oh, so, sorry, that was uh, three silver to play. Okay. Who's next? I suppose I'll take a whack at it. Okay, so once again, uh, three silver. It is five worms. Uh, it's a DC 12 to hit them. All right. Pop, 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 pop. Oh. oh. You know what? Just to be cheeky, I'm going to use my... Uh, uh, wait, genius. hold on. Let me just... No, not Flash Genius. Uh, fuck, what's the thing called? Brain, why? The brain, why? Why now, of all times, you forsake me? Uh, my magic armor. So, armor, magic, strength. I can use... Uh, add my intelligence modifier to my strength check. So, use a charge of that. And with a flash of armor, doom. <laughs> all right. So, I think technically I should have had you roll it. I'd do that before you roll, but it's a fair uh, so yeah, you you cheat at the at the game, and you get all five. Let's be real; we've all cheated so far. Honor among thieves. Yep. So that earns you a minor magic item. Yeah. <laughs> More pets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else wants to try whack a whack a worm? Yeah. So how many tokens do I get? Three. It's uh five strength checks, right? Five strength checks, yes. I'm bad at those, but let's go. Let's do it. One, two, three. Uh, oh. <laughs> so that is yeah. enough to earn you a random trinket. Or no, this should Ooh. be a Monday night. <gasps> That's so cool. That's tight. Wait, this is an eighty pound. An eighty pound emperor penguin is like double the size of a normal emperor penguin. This thing's huge. I didn't make the roll table. <laughs> Big boy, the emperor of all emperor penguins. She is uh, their leader. Dora, are you gonna try for whack a worm? I think they have kids. Yeah, Dora had to leave for a moment. Rest in pieces. Uh, while Dora's uh, AFK, do you guys want to check out the fancy hat shop? Sure. Yeah, why not? I don't want to look around the fancy hat. Before we get sent into a storybook, uh, I don't yep. want to check out the fancy hat shop. <laughs> Come on, do you think I would do... That twice? Uh, that's exactly that what you want us to think. <laughs> yes, I do. It's all too convenient. It's all right there. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me an investigation check to find the fanciest hat. A very fancy Found. hat indeed. Yeah. Uh, so I need a d20. On a 19 or 20, you find a minor magic item. Nope. Okay. It's just a fancy hat. What kind of a hat? Can I decide the type of hat? Uh, I'm. I got a funky hat generator. I'm just gonna keep clicking till you tell me to stop. Stop. 
This narrow brimmed wizard hat is made from fruit print fabric designed with in white and gray. It's accented with a ribbon. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Majestic. I love it. Edwin's gonna. He's a hawk, a five foot tall hawk man with a fruit print wizard hat with a ribbon on it. I'll, Perfect. I'll put the, there we go. So, uh, next up is, uh, so that's, uh, that's a one gold piece. Okay. Uh, who else wants to try for a fancy hat? Bet. All right. Do me an investigation. Not that you need to roll. Fancy hat. Fancy hat. Uh, once again, uh, D20 on a 19 or 20, you get one with a minor magical effect. Hit? No. All right, I'm going to keep clicking. Tell me when to stop. Stop. This beret is knitted, with, uh, knitted from dark pink and light blue yarn. It is accented with a bow. Well, it's something. It is one gold piece. Yep. <laughs> uh, formerly, you getting in on this action? Yeah, sure. All right. Roll me an investigation and a d20. Absolutely. Also, <gasps> hello. She's returned. They're here. The Honey, prodigal I son. Dora. All right, and a d20. Alright. And this is a gold, right? Just like mark it off. Yeah, just one gold piece. Alright. Yep. Once again, I'm just gonna keep clicking. Tell me when to stop. <laughs> stop. Wow. This chef's hat is made from yellow and green zebra stripe print fabric. Oh. <laughs> I have the worst gift gl for Cleo I've ever found. <laughs> Here, clear. Here's some rum, and also this hat. <laughs> also, this disgustingly gaudy hat. Uh, Dora, are you back? I just got back. What? Is, what is happening? We're getting uh, hats. So we hats. We're getting First monstrosities. Off, uh, you could play whack a worm if you desire. I have no interest, thank you. Would you like to dig You're around for a fancy ones. hat? How much are the hats? They're one gold piece. I will pick a hat. All right. Do me an investigation. I have a cool hat. Do me an investigation. Like, have an even cooler hat. And There's then no a d20. 15. Okay. And okay. 11. Once again, I'm going to keep clicking in the generator and tell me when to stop. Stop. Interesting. This uh -huh. motor hat is made from dark gray denim. It is accented with a copper buckle. I got a jet. <laughs> <laughs> a jet. <laughs> I don't want a oh. fucking jet. Are you jealous of Edwin's yeah. wizard hat covered in fruit fabric? Quite frankly, Greg as a person is. I feel like uh, Zora is like, ah, oh, yes, look at that beret. Yes, Very my uh, knitted dark pink and light blue beret with a bow. I love that. Uh, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll take this fucking jet. <laughs> <laughs> A jet to a jet. Oh, it's all a, these hats It's not just a jet, it's a boater jet. A joder jet? A joder jet. jet. <laughs> joder jet with that juckle. Oh. I hate oh, all the this. Well, that would be a cuckle, because it's copper. Oh, God. <laughs> my my jet cuckle. Oh, it's better, it could be a popper. <laughs> uh. Oh, <laughs> This sounds like we're making up kinks. <laughs> My jet cuckle. Your Joder jet with a cuckle. <laughs> Your Joder jet with a cuckle. 
Uh, get that shit on the damn pier and make a party, all dude. Alright, let's see if Maria gets uh, What are we doing? How do I play? What are we doing? Welcome back okay. from Maria. being in Perfect hell. Perfect timing. <laughs> Maria, I have two questions for you. Do you want to play Whack-A-Worm? And do you... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right. It's so what game. you have to do what? for whack a worm is, uh -huh. I, I think it said it was three silver. What you have to do is you have to roll, uh, five strength checks, and how many times you beat a DC of twelve determines how good of a prize you get. Okay. Yes, I will do it. Okay. Cool. Go for it. While you're on that, I'll also say that uh, you did miss uh, our new friend Dora sticking their hand to a snake pit and getting bit three times. Twice. Yeah. Two times. Two times. Sorry, two yeah. times. Love yeah. that for you. <laughs> How many strength checks am I doing? Five. It, it, it's it's okay. uh, D20 plus strength to use the hammer. Uh, fuck it. I'm using Tides of Chaos to roll the first one with advantage. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. There's uh, one. I did use two Ben Fates to give your uh, teammates advantages in other games. It was a dance off. Or and you know what? A little bit of D4s. If you're about to worm it up, uh, Dora will stand behind you and just ever so gently brush your hand against your back. And you are guided. Nice. I would do, what what yes. do I what do I do? You get nine so, D four to a check. Add a d4 to your next check. Gotcha. Uh, another strength, please. Nice. Don't even fucking need it. Yeah, yeah. you can choose to not. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, can I save it for yeah, the next one it. or not? Yeah, you can save it for whenever uh, you want to use it. More. Okay. Might want well use it now. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, d4. You are four, okay. damn. Not enough. Uh, and two more. Okay. And one more. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's enough to get you a mundane item. <laughs> <laughs> I love... Just as... Like... <laughs> As they go to pull something, like, out of the box, uh, this pebble falls in the sky, crushes whatever was in their hand, and beds itself in the ground. You, she just shrugs, like, I guess that's your prize. <laughs> and I need to make another fucking strength check to pull yeah. it the ground. Uh, and the cosmic irony. Welcome, also, welcome yes, to the carnival. Maria, um... Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Maria got a legendary item and none of us know what it is. That's true. You got a weird looking I, fruit. Yeah. I can't yeah. get it out of the ground. Uh, <laughs> hey, I mean, uh, let me help with that. Maria goes, fuck, I don't even want it anymore. <laughs> it's stupid anyway. Oh, Maria. Uh, they, they have yeah. a thing back there that where you can make coats of arms for your family. And if they don't have one to like help you make one. And they uh they put it on like a wooden shield, and I think that we should get one for the Bianchis. Oh my god, we totally should. Uh, now, this is, I will say, this is the second time you said that name. Who are the Bianchis? Oh, it's uh. It's, uh, uh he kind of looks at Edwin yeah. in the "How much do you want us to tell your friend?" kind of way. It's uh, it's sort of like a a. a nickname for an organization uh we're not we're not really it, it's it's just kind of like an inside thing so, uh, like, do an insight check oh yeah at advantage edwin, because edwin is terrible that's a 21 do i not get to deception against that <laughs> that's your dc edwin okay <laughs> Oh. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! What the f fucking uh, hell? <laughs> How is that? My quiet. <laughs> How do you have a plus nine? <laughs> I have a plus thirteen. A plus thirteen. Yeah. How, how do you is have, that? How do you have? I have 
20 charisma, and then I have Have you just been pumping all of your expertise into this? Oh, shit. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, Dora, fuck, dude. I don't know what to tell you. I can only match that with sleight of hand and stealth. Dora, I somehow that absolute <laughs> dog's dinner of an explanation seems fucking wild. Listen, he, it he's... sounds wild, but you can't fault it. <laughs> He's but he's just always on, really nervous and yeah, weird, so it's hard to determine yeah. if it's him lying or if it's him like just, <laughs> just being having weird. social anxiety. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you can't tell. <laughs> he's the perfect bot. Just no one will ever know. Going you tell him the secrets of the universe. Days, you feel like this is probably the latter. This is him just being socially awkward. Is it like? Like secret society things? Is it like, or like, gentlemen's club things? Like, hmm? it's sort of like a club, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. I think by it's beating the DC by ten, pretty much any yarn you spin at this point will be believed. We're sort of, we're sort of like working together to investigate some. Some little. These were the people that I was with when I was investigating stuff about vampires and all that. So, they, they've been helping me with with that type of research a little bit, and and uh, we've just been traveling around the city, finding mysterious things. And and those are people you are currently in contact with, right? Oh yes, yes. This because is I them. Have... Oh. What, while you're talking, Shamrock like easily pulls it out of the ground. I don't know. <laughs> it's a weird rock. Yeah. It feels a little bit denser than a normal rock of that size. I mean, I'll just pocket it for later if Maria doesn't want it. Goes through your pocket and back into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Oh, I like that uh, pocket. <laughs> Jess, did you get the, the private message I sent you? Uh, yes, but I didn't look at it. Give me two seconds. Okay. <clears throat> well, I will say part of the reason why I am here is because of some of the things that you said in that last letter about things that you were researching, and I figured I might be able to help a little bit. This isn't really polite conversation for outside times, but if mm -hmm, you all wanted to meet up somewhere more private at another later date for business conversations, okay, I... I'm trying not to ship this couple, but you're making it difficult. Who was a lesbian? Yeah. <laughs> I know, but you're talking like who? double entendres. I'm everywhere. not even talking to Jeffrey. Edwin. I'm talking to the group at large. Oh, Jeffrey, you were talking um, to yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was Jeffrey. Like, okay, I thought you were talking to Edwin, to be fair. I mean this lovingly. You're so autistic. <laughs> <laughs> mm. As a fellow Aspie, <laughs> by God, King. <laughs> yeah, there's... Everyone else here knows that there's no chance of that happening. <laughs> Listen, I, th I'm i going to die with this ship. Oh, no. Me three seconds ago, <laughs> Dora very softly touches Maria, you. But the cop head. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so... This is getting a bit weird. So I'm just going to back on up. <laughs> Go to the spooky zone. Oh my this god. This is the shit Fuck. I'm fucking yeah, here I want to go to for. The spooky zone. Fuck. Hold on. Maria, did you want to dig around for a fancy hat? Maria, they're all ugly. Okay. It's not worth it. Come on. Do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. Get an Fuck. abomination. They're all Fucking ugly. You should fine. totally do it. All but right. you might get the magic one. Uh, you need to roll an investigation and a Investigation. On a 19 or a 20, it's got a minor magical effect. Oh boy. It's my investigation. Oh, nice. Ooh. And a d20. Oh. Do 
you want to see if you can bend fate a little bit and make it a 19 or a 20. How many sorcery points do I have left? Uh, you used two. I've used two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, you need a two or more. Hey! Oh, yes. Good. Now, what kind of monstrosity is this uh, magical fet seated on? All right. I'm going to click this generate button until you tell me to stop. Okay, now stop. Okay. Uh, this newsboy cap is knitted from pastel orange, light brown, light blue, and dark no. gray yarn. Oh. No, I don't want a newsboy cap. Fuck. Pay another gold to try again. But it also no. gives you un. Also gives you unlimited godly power. Is it not magic? Yeah. What's the minor magical effect? Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, roll me. One D ten thousand. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Alright, one eight six six. Uh okay, so while you're wearing this art uh, while you're wearing this hat. Uh, when you, while you are casting a spell, your clothes are impervious to acid. Uh, I mean, I'll shove it in my clutch, I guess, but this is fucking <laughs> ugly. <laughs> <laughs> they all are! That's the trick! <laughs> It's not ugly in a cute way, though. Like, sometimes things are pretty ugly. This is just ugly, ugly. <laughs> okay, so. God. Now we come to the main attraction of the night. Come, dearies. <laughs> come, get your fortune told. Uh, all right. Uh, guess I'll take the lead on this. All right. So she grabs your she, her hand darts out like a snake and grabs your hand, in her like gnarled, long, uh, long thing long fingernailed hand, like it's it's got that like bony, old woman hand but still really strong grip. Uh, but she pulls your hand towards her and she reads your palm a little bit and says, hmm, interesting. You are going to lead a very long life. Well, that's nice. Tell me, dearie, do you want to scry the cards or shall we peer into the crystal ball? Uh, you know what? Let's try the crystal ball. I've uh, done cards a few times. Very well. Now I'm going to need something of yours to focus it on you. Perhaps a handkerchief. Or a, a, a pocket. Or one of those little cufflinks. Uh, alright. We'll take off one of his... Uh buttons to his cubs and just sort of sets on the table. So she places it uh, so her crystal ball is standing up on this uh, like spindly legged, almost looks like four chicken legs it's like metal stand like you would see like a beaker put on mm -hmm. and she, she places the, but, uh, the button under it so it's directly under the center of the crystal ball and she swirls her hands over it making, like, very hokey, arcane gestures. Okay. Smoke starts to swirl in, like, 
purplish glowing smoke starts to swirl inside the uh just the swirl inside the crystal ball as she peers into it and the reflection of the uh the reflection of the glowing purple smoke uh seems to almost steal her eyes until her eyes are glowing purple as well or it seems to be anyway this could all be fake uh and now ask a question of the crystal ball dearie uh, as I run to my notes real fast, see if I have any pressing questions. Oh, that's a shopping list. Uh, will Fritz be safe? <gasps> oh. The smoke turns green. Uh, is that a good sign? Hmm. It seems like... It seems like it... Your... Your friend will be safe. Although for <sighs> how long, who can tell? So is safe enough to get back. Alright, uh... How many, uh, questions do I get? Uh, just the one, dearie. Oh, uh, I gotta let right. the others that's have a turn. <laughs> that's fine. I, uh, that's a weight off my shoulders, at least. That'll be one gold piece from you, please. You can just uh, drop sure. it into the bucket over there. There's a bucket, sure. like, on the side of the table. Mm -hmm. No, he's feeling generous. He'll drop two. Oh, oh thank you, dearie. <laughs> Thanks. All you, right, who's up? You with a strong chin, she points to Dora. You look like you are burning with questions. Come, come. Um, yeah, sure. Um, perfectly fine. Do I also get to choose, or are we all just going you, straight you can for choose. the... You can, you can, you can consult the cards. Uh, I used to read the bones, but, uh, they wouldn't let me bring in real animal bones anymore, so now all I have is the cards, and... The and the crystal ball. Uh, if you'd caught me at one of the more traditional ones, we could have done some sangramancy, but. Well, if I ever run into you outside of this. Uh... It's called uh, Haru's Fissy. Not sangramancy. Haru's Fissy. I will know to see you for a fun time. I think I want the cards. I've never had my cards read, read before. Very well. Go ahead and shuffle these cards nice and well, dearie. And while you're shuffling them, think of think of the question you want to ask them. Hmm. Is a good Question, question of a question. Hmm. Got a good question in mind, dearie. You caught me a bit off guard, so I'm not gonna lie to you. Um. Will I. Find what I'm looking for. No. Okay. Let's read the cards. Okay. Oh. A spicy chuckle. And we'll cut. <laughs> now, do you want me to flip sideways or vertically? Who flips? Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, sideways. Sideways. 
Uh, number 15, The Habit, Inverted. Dependency. The card is a good omen and is telling you that you are slowly becoming able to untie yourself from your addictions. You've opened your eyes and now you're realizing the harm that is causing you or may cause you in the future. That's really ironic, considering I just stopped fucking playing. Shall we? That's in the first week. Two weeks out. The temperance inverted. <laughs> the opposite of the card you just pulled. <laughs> When a verse, the card lets you know you, that you are not carefully balancing situations between your personal and social life. You're bringing problems into your work and home environment that make you feel out of balance. At terms, your long-term visions of the future is slowly disappearing and into oblivion. Three weeks out. The Six of Cups inverted. The card implies that you are too caught up in the past. The mindset has you neglecting your present and blinding you to your future. You're also suppressing past memories that may hurt you if they were to resurface. Four weeks out. The Page of Damn. Swords. How many fucking weeks we go in? It's the 30-day forecast. <laughs> forecast. Who has that amount of energy? <laughs> but when's it going to rain? The... Where is the page? Oh, book. I wish you were in order. Page of Swords. Upright. Denotes a person who is quirky, feisty, and quick-witted has a smart remark for everything. Their persona and attitude whisks away what is no longer needed. They have the ability to clear up all confusion. On the negative side, a Page of Swords is someone who blows things out of proportion, who may also blow things out of proportion. And then the month's outcome for card number five. The seven of wands. Bravery. In reading, this card represents having your courage to overcome any problem or obstacle that stands in your way. You are in the middle of facing a challenge, one where you will have to show that you can conquer or handle it with professionalism. When you feel like you're being used and abused, know that, o that only you have the advantage and strength to stand up to defend yourself. That looks like you're going to have a tough middle of the month, dearie. Well... Gods, now I'll find some way to muddle through. Well, I wish you the best. Let me one gold piece, please. I will also drop in two. Ah, bless you, that kindness. was a lot of work. Uh, who else wants to get their fortune read? Come, come, don't be shy. I'm actually quite interested. Very well. Come in, come in, sit down. Ooh. I can tell by the set of your jaw and the structure of your shoulders that you will have a long, fulfilling life. Oh, well, here's to hoping. Now, shall we be 
reading the crystal ball or the cards? I'm interested to hear the cards. Very well. Go ahead, shuffle these cards while you think about the, re uh, the results you want, the question you want to ask. What does my future with my deity hold? Mm. A hard one to divine the future that far back. We'll have to put some extra mojo into this. <clears throat> she starts chanting in a language. Do any of you know Celestial? <gasps> no. I uh, don't think so. No. I forgot to pick languages. I picked some more human languages. Yeah, Dwarf Shelving, Halfling, Necro, and a bunch oh, of human God. ones now. Okay. So she starts chanting in a beautiful language, which is pleasant to the ear. Uh, but does not seem does not seem to uh, mean anything to any of you. Let's see. Archaeologist only gives me one additional language. That's homophobic. <laughs> well, start can't, using my glasses. Can't, can't not use it for Egyptian. <laughs> Do what you want. All right. <clears throat> Go ahead, dearie. Cut that deck. All right. Let's do a time after time, shall we? Sounds fair. Are we flipping vertically or horizontally? Horizontally. The distant past. The King of Swords in dirt. King of Swords represents logic. Uh, King of Swords rep uh, a situation represents you will have to think about with logic and conviction. In your far past, in your distant past, several years ago, you weren't quite thinking clearly. Maybe you made a few rash decisions a few years back. Things you might come to regret. Now, or already are, or in the future. Your recent past. The One of Swords inverted. In your recent past, you went through... A series of uh, mental blockages which helped, kept you from thinking clearly, blocked off the flow of thoughts. You were overanalyzing things, perhaps, giving extra thought to even the simplest of deeds. Shall we look at your present? I suppose. The Empress. Upright. That is number three. You need to put your creative creativity into action. Make things happen. Even if you have to start from scratch and build. 
Now's the time to get really into there. Dig your fingers into the dirt. Mold some clay. Pick up your chisel. Start getting creative with your solutions. Now is the time. Your near future. A few years out. <laughs> the temperance inverted. You're going to get into some social situations where you aren't being as careful as you perhaps should. Maybe your temper is going to <laughs> fly off the handle, as it were. Perhaps one one day soon you'll burst out at a lover or a close friend. Or as this is in relation to your deity, perhaps the two of you will have a bit of a disagreement. And the your hot-headedness will get the better of you. In the far future. The Nine of Wands inverted. Oh dear, that's not good at all. period of self-hurt, inflicting pain upon yourself, and at the same time other people are hurting you. The worst part is you are not doing anything to defend yourself. Or, alternatively, you could be hurting other people unconsciously. A dire fate, dearie. Shall we see what you need to do to avert it? Yes, I think perhaps keeping a cool head is a start, but that would be very helpful. Yes, please. The person representing your trouble is... Oh, dear. It's not good sounding. Did you pull? The Queen of Pentacles inverted. I'm guessing inverted means it's not great based on these other ones. The Queen of Pentacles is your foe in this. An ambitious person, a go getter, a social climber. Someone close to you is sabotaging you in this. Think, dearie, is there anyone close to you who is outgoing and social and looking to move up in the world? Perhaps not what they do to you specifically, but their ambitions will trample many on their path. Perhaps you need to distance yourself. That's what the cards say. I will keep that in mind. He's like <laughs> tapping his hand on, on his like and that thigh. Be one gold mm. piece for the reading. Yep, right. Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll give her two gold pieces, but he's gonna. Thank it's you. Gonna, he's going to think about some such, such a generous group. You there. The the, the boy with the bowl cut. <laughs> Get his ass. <laughs> you very supreme, bitch. Oh, you can't dear. call me Dorothy, girl. We got the same fucking hair, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Twins. Right, Edwin, well, Edwin is now, like, shaking. A his knees are, like, clanking a little bit. He's He's shook. But he's going to step forward and... Shall we <laughs> consult the crystal ball? Or do we want to read the cards, dearie? Oh? Um, 
maybe the crystal ball? What kind of questions can I ask? Oh, you can ask crystal ball any question, dearie. But uh, the the reach is not long. After all, the further out you reach, the more uncertain the future is. Or perhaps you ask about the past. Edwin's gonna think for a second, and then he's gonna come up with something that he he's gonna look like. Oh, I could ask that. Nope. And then he stops and thinks more, and then he asks instead, uh, "Where can I find the solution to Missy's problem?" Uh, so, the way that the crystal ball works... I can't ask where. You, you can't ask where. You could ask about a specific course of action or plan. How do I solve Missy's problem? Uh, you could, <laughs> That's what I'll do. So you, you could ask something like, is, Missy's prob is the solution to Missy's problem located in the city? Or, uh, if I go here, would this solve Missy's problem? This is like yes or no. This is an augury spell, so you can ask okay. about an action or a plan. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, I need to think about this one then. You could uh, say something like, "If I ask, uh, if I searched around the docks, would I find the solution to Missy's problem, or something like that?" Hmm. Or perhaps you could ask something more general, like, uh. If I go out to search for a solution to Missy's problem, will I find one? <laughs> I'm gonna redact my question about Missy, and instead I'm gonna ask... Where, or no, I can't ask where. If I search in the city, will I find evidence of my father? Hmm. Let us consult the orb, dear. Uh, what do you give her to help link it to you? Uh, my little amulet with the family crest on it. Ooh. A strong connection. Yes, yes. I can see it. The smoke. Uh, the smoke swirls. Purple. The, the purple light uh, from the swirling smoke seems to reflect off her eyes almost like two filmy mirrors. As she's swirling her hands around it, she asks, Tell us, Crystal Ball. What is the answer? The smoke slowly starts to change color. Half of it swirling in red. The other half swirling in green. As it spins around itself like an off-color yin-yang. What does that mean? Uh, out of character, this is a wheel and woe. Uh, for both good and bad result. Oh, <laughs> good. The confusing one. Uh, you, you may find uh, some signs of your father, but it might not be the way you expect it. Well, all right. Thank you. Uh, what do I owe her? A gold? Uh, one gold piece. Yeah, I'll give her two. I'll all also right. do that. Uh, uh, I think Maria might be the last one. I think so. All right. S step up, young lady. Step up. Come closer. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. All right. And she, like, breezes into the chair. Did I Did I hear, like, all of Formerly's... Uh, she wasn't being quiet. Cards? Uh, okay. It's up to you how you interpret it. This was... Uh, several years out, uh, this, this foe was, 
uh, going to cause this issue. It might not be referring to you. It's up to you how you. No, everything is about me. So okay, that's it's, fair. We Maybe are always about me. Marie um, is the center of the universe. It's true. It's true. Um, so uh, I am the a common little knowledge, bit on edge fair. right now. Perhaps the cost is saying your personal ambition will be the death of those near you. Maybe, but for now, I'm going to try to push that to the back of my mind. Okay. Uh, so do you want the orb? Or do you want to ponder the crystal ball? Or would you like a card reading? Cards. Cards? Very well. Take these cards while you think of your question and shuffle them well, dearie. I try to shuffle these cards that are bigger than my hand. Oh, you got the big tarot cards. I got big tarot cards. They've never lied to me, though. One more shuffle. Have you thought of a, a question, dearie? I have, yes. Uh, do I have to ask it out loud? Well, I mean, all you have to do is ask the cards, dearie. But all the rest of your friends have. Are you ashamed of your question? I lean in and I whisper to the cards, I guess. Uh, and I say... You can DM me if you want. Yes. Sure you want Shamrock to have that? I'm, I'm not gonna ever use it. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna immediately forget it exists. Probably. Mm, curious. Okay, let's do beauty, truth, and light. Or, hmm. No, this feels like a very personal one. Let's do mind over heart. The first card okay. is... Uh, I'm going to need a little bit more juice for this one. Give me just a minute, dearie. As she starts chanting uh, in that beautiful language again, which none of you know. Now... Let's see what the cards say, dearie. Oh, sorry. Uh, horizontal or vertical? Vertical. The situation is a nine of pentacles upright. In this reading, this card represents the achievement of all good things. You've created a higher standing for yourself. Your projects will turn into completions. What you've worked for will be a gateway to abundance. 
You've handled many bothersome situations all by yourself. What you've envisioned has come to you. Now, what does your mind say? The Eight of Pentacles upright. Practice. The card represents acquiring a new skill. Or better yet, a new talent. You you will need to find yourself fully dedicated in working on a goal to receive the results you'd like. The outcome if you listen to your mind. The paranormal operates. Should you follow your mind, you will find mysteries you may not be able to solve. There's a calling from the unknown which summons your attention. You will need to follow it and see what you uncover. This is what your heart says. The Nine of Cups. Satisfaction represents wishes coming true. From this moment, you will have the best of everything in life. However, you have not received everything you wanted. You are content with what you have, but not full. The wish that you have longed, you've been longing to have come true and have held onto for some time will finally come to fruition. Now, the outcome if you listen to your heart. The Magician. In order to create what it is you want... Uh, the Magician represents inner skill. In order to create the situation you want... You must first learn by trial and error. Nobody becomes good at something without trying. Within you, you possess the skills you already need. You simply must work hard at them. I hope that explains everything you ask, dearie. Maria doesn't say anything, but she does stand up and she drops ten gold into the thing. Oh, <laughs> very generous. Very generous. Now, what about you? As she looks past all of you, the silver. Aww. Uh, me? Oh. Uh, I guess. Come. Surely a foe such as yourself has questions? Shaking like a leaf in the wind. <laughs> come, come. Just, just slowly approaches. Ah, I see by the sparrows of your horn that you are for an, in for an interesting life. Oh? Yes. It will be full of I, trials, I... tribulations, but great rewards as well. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh. Come, come. Step closer. Are we reading from the orb? Or shall we ask the card? Um, uh, I, I guess we'll ask the cards. The cards it is. Now, just do your best to nose them about and shuffle them, dearie. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. Uh, <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, I guess... <laughs> Now, think about the question you want to ask most of all. What is your heart's burning desire to answer? Hmm. What's going on with Dad? Hmm, a family question. 
Those are always tricky. Hmm, interesting result. The King of Wands. Your father is a wonderful role model and leader. The King yeah, of Wands is self confident, good. brave, and inspiring. person who is a rightful leader. Their charismatic nature attracts pe people from all walks of life, serving others as a good influence. Oh. This person does not have any difficulties in leading the way for people who will become lifelong friends. Their good nature and influence will serve not only a pur purpose to them, but to others as well. Oh, oh, that's good. Mm, now, what is the good about this person? I, I mean, the, um, the, well, hmm? the, the beauty or good qualities of him, the Four of Wands. Interesting. Upright represents the important per value of being united with loved ones when you are connected. When he is connected with those he cares about and who care about him as well, the bond is strong. He loves and accepts those who are different, even you. When he is feeling alone and neglected, he can always find someone to trust. Now the ugly. Ooh. The three it, of wands. Is it upright. Represents prolonged process and development. Perhaps he takes a bit too long to do things. A bit too relaxed about things. Takes too much time to let things develop. Oh, that, that, that's bad. Hmm. Shall we see what he represents? Most of all. Y yeah. Oh, goodbye. And welcome back. Rest in pasta. Mastership. To you, he represents total control over an area, mastering all all parts of an art. Or perhaps he just demonstrates those to you. Is there perhaps a situation that he could show you uh, increased skill. He could help you increase your skill. In. Oh, I mean, yeah, he, he's pretty good at a lot of things, but I mean, he does. Oh dear. Well. Yeah. 
He does he, things, yeah. With his best quality comes his worst quality. The temperance inverted. He is not carefully balancing his life. Perhaps he is bringing problems home from work, or perhaps his home environment is coming with him to his work. His life is out of balance. His long term vision may slowly disappear into oblivion. Uh, so. The Temperance card is normally uh, looks like um, it looks like a, a small woman, like a duchess almost, with those poofy white powder wigs. Mm -hmm. Similar color gray to the color the Shamrock's hair turned, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, with deep black rings around the eyes. Looks to be pouring. A small measured amount of uh, looks like champagne or wine into a flute. However, when it's drawn inverted, the champagne turns a sinister red. Oh, oh dear. Hmm. Perhaps your father has some secrets. Well, uh, not sure about secrets, uh, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's not anything too bad. Well, uh, look, you may feel free to interpret the cards as you wish. Right, right. Uh, well, th thanks. Uh. Absolutely. For you, young foe, you don't need to pay. Your friends have paid. More than enough. Oh, I, uh, no, no, I insist. I, you, you did the, all that. I mean, I could not. Very well. Take this. In exchange. She plucks from inside her robe uh, a little ring of woven flowers and places it over his horn. Oh, it, it, that's lovely. Thank you. Yarrow flowers for good health. Oh. Uh, thanks and noses through the pouch of coins that Shamrock gave him at the beginning of the festival. Slightly lighter now, but pulls out uh, ten silver and deposits it in the pot. Now, I'm afraid that I have to rest myself and my magical energies, dearie. Uh, dearies, but please... Do come back another day and see. Oh, th thank you. And just hop, hops off the uh, stool. Uh, she goes back into her tent. For the record, everyone else just sees the woman talking to uh, Silver and is not hearing anything in response. Yeah, no, she's yeah. communicating mentally with him. Yeah. I mean, it's, I guess it's too late telepathy then. <laughs> it's just she can't telepathy back. Well, there we go. Yeah. Very awkward Moa just staring at a horse, staring at a person. As she flips yeah. cards, yeah. <laughs> that's... I guess that's the thing. Very well. So, uh... It is now... Uh, the time of... Uh... Ending the game. Oh, uh, we ran a little over. Yeah. And we still have a little bit of a meeting to have after this. So I will thank everyone ever so much for joining us another adventure in the Unsung City. And we will see you next week. Goodbye!
Bye. Oh, Charles isn't here to say unhung titty. I will. That titty is unhung. <laughs> <laughs>